An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A certain Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, few egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, pure time and velvet style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be to the, the fullest. fullest. Good evening, everybody. This is Carrie Light, a.k.a. Scary Carrie, coming to you live tonight from a little town just south of Austin, Texas, called Kyle. And I'm really excited about this special presentation of my Make That Change show, and I really appreciate you joining me. And if you all want to just jump on Facebook or wherever and let your friends and family know that we're on tonight and we're talking about really good stuff tools for success, and I have amazing guests here with me tonight. Um, you just don't want to miss it. And you can join us at www.truthfindersnetwork.com, and we have a chat room there, and I will be on there here in a little bit joining you and trying to watch for questions as well. Um, but I just want to jump right in and announce my guests tonight, and then we're just going to jump right into conversation because we've got a lot to talk about, and two hours goes by really, really fast. Um, my first, uh, the first lady that I'd like to introduce tonight is Mary Adams, and then I've got Katerina Edwards-Roy, and then Jennifer Pennington, and I'm hoping that um, a good friend of mine, Deborah Hernandez Antich can join us this evening as well. I'm not sure. Hopefully we'll get her in here at least by halftime. But, um, you know, tonight what we're talking about is tools of transformation. And, um, you know, there's three C's for that. Confidence, courage, and character. Just, just to name a few. And I really hope that we can get everybody called in tonight and join the conversation. Um, but I'm going to hand it off to Mary Adams uh, first and, and let her reach out and speak to everybody. But I want to tell you a little bit about her. She is the co-owner and co-creator, the co-owner of Co-Creator Radio Network, spreading and facilitating empowerment globally for eight years now, 24-7. Uh, she is a teacher, a coach, and a minister, and a social media empowerment catalyst with over 120,000 followers. That's just mind-blowing. Um, that's taking a conversation and, and making a million out of it. Um, and that's all on social media, you know. It's just such a beautiful thing. And you can find her at cocreatornetwork.com, and you can email her at cocreatormaryadams at gmail.com. And I want to repeat, I want to give you that website again, because I, 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 I'm looking at the dash right where the break is. <laughs> so it looks like go down below, but it's actually co-creatornetwork.com. I'm going to move that all down for myself for next time. But um, So Mary, thank you for joining me tonight, and I just want to hand it off to you for a little bit and let you talk to me and everybody and tell us, tell us your thoughts on tools of transformation. Mm, thank you, Carrie, and I want to thank everybody for listening today. It's so exciting to be with you, here to share and talk about something that I'm really passionate about, which is transformation and change. And uh, for those of you who already know some of my story, I've had a lot of incredible transformation and change and healing that has brought my life to a whole new spectrum. Um, I enjoy my life very much. I have healed myself in amazing ways, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and now I get the opportunity to work with others and do that on a global level. Um, 
what I want to start out with is talking about my perspectives on conscious change and creating the life that you desire. And oftentimes, we're so stuck within the paradigms of um, our own existence and being caught up in the rat race and work and kids and home and all of these duties and all of these things that we believe we have to do in order to live a good life. And we get so caught up in that that we often lose ourselves. And I meet so many people through my coaching practice and through social media that have a lot of issues going into their 30s and 40s and 50s because they realize not only have they lost themselves, but they have completely gotten away from what makes them truly happy. And we get stuck in that space and, of course, depression and all sorts of other um, issues come into play, anger, stress, and our lives become miserable. Our lives become something that we, we don't know who we are anymore and we don't know what we want. And so that's what, that's what, what my mission is, is my mission is to educate people and give them food for thought give them the opportunity to look deeper within themselves and around them. And I believe that with that awareness, we can change our lives for the better, uh, which we all deserve. I really feel that we deserve that. I do, too. I do, too. I mean, we do deserve that. Like, maybe that's, that's a big hang-up for people. It's feeling like maybe you don't deserve it, mm -hmm. like guilt. So, uh, you know, one of the tools is probably going to have to be acceptance, right, of, of just knowing that we do deserve that. I mean, even if we're not perfect in, in our own eyes or in anyone else's eyes, we need, to, we need to be able to accept that we deserve it. I don't know, what, what are some ways that we, like, we could share with people who maybe just don't know what that looks like? Well, I think having awareness is the biggest piece. So the tool that I'm going to share that creates great awareness is I have a journal, and I call it my brain dump journal. And in this journal, and often I'll find that, you know, I'm either full emotionally or my mind is very full, and so I'm having trouble, number one, usually focusing, Number two, reducing, you know, I'm feeling stress or I'm feeling anxiety. And so by doing a brain dump, you get a piece of paper and you write down exactly what's going on, whether it's true or not. It doesn't matter, but you just write it down. So number one might be, I don't have enough time to finish my to-do list. So say that's number one. Number two is that my Aunt Jackie is frustrated with me because I didn't do what she wanted me to do. Okay, and on and on and on. Yeah, and I then, like that last one. And so after you write it down, that's the brain dump part. So after you write it down, then you go back and you look at the first one. And Byron Katie is awesome at this. She has this process. Number one, is this true? Now, what's funny about our brains is we often make up stories about what is real and what's not. We're not always in reality. And so this gives you the opportunity to decide, is this really true and is it pertinent at this moment? I mean, does this really have anything to do with me? Is it your circus or not? Right. And number two, then it gives you the opportunity to make choice. Okay, if this is true and this is present, I have infinite options A through Z. And that's when you go through your brainstorm. How could I solve this? And that's where you write down, even if it's the most ridiculous thing, you still right. write it down. Because sometimes that thing that seems odd or foreign may be exactly what needs to happen. So that's the tool that I really want to share today on this. And, um, you know, and I'm interested to hear how it works for other people. I know for myself it's a really great tool because no matter how much internal work you do, there's right, always a full mind, you know, going on, and our goal. So it's to kind of like just free, free writing. Like, like I visualize you going down the road in your car and like doing voice recording real quick. Note to self. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, and it's like part to do list, 
part, I'm really frustrated with this person, I've got to get this off my brain because it's stealing time, part, I want to, this is a dream, right? Like, like, yeah. what does it look like for you throughout the day when you're in, dif- like, because you can't always just, I well, mean, to make it realistic for people to actually do throughout the day in their car or at the coffee shop or whatever. Well, and it might be something that we see to ourselves. So I have one client that her issue with her self-perception is she felt fat. She felt fat all the time. She felt fat. She felt fat. And everything she did and everywhere she went, she felt fat. And it followed her around. So what we did is that we focused on that. And she wrote that down every single day for about five months. And then all of a sudden, she realized that it was only a perception. It really wasn't a reality. It was how she was choosing to see herself. And she shifted it from, I feel fat, to, wow, look, I'm losing a few pounds. Wow, look at this dress. Wow, I'm sexy. I didn't have to lose this weight. And what happened is she didn't (laughs) lose the weight, and that's not the part that mattered. It was that in her mind, she saw herself as beautiful, and that is what seemed out. That's and awesome. so that's what I want to say is it's not something you have to physically do or where you move or where you go. It has to happen within you. And you have to embrace yourself and love yourself from where you're at. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, do you guys, do, you, do either of you have any thoughts that you want to throw out on brain dumping? Where we're standing on it on the subject I, right now. I really do believe that brain dumping is a very important part of this process. I've never heard of it heard it called like that. Well, I, love I that. also think of it as in terms that uh, Julia Cameron put it was you know the the morning pages. So first thing in the morning, what I would do when I was going through a big process of clearing out belief systems and old habits and patterns and all of that stuff, really engaging in these habits of change, I would wake up in the morning every morning around 8 a.m., and as I was doing my regimens for, like, detoxing my liver, I would be sitting there, like, writing all of this crap that was just coming up for me from the dredges of my sleep, you know, and just yeah. some of these ra- really crazy, bizarre dreams that you get when you're really healing and cleaning out the body. So they would just be so, so crazy, and I would just allow it all to come out. There was no judgment if I was an axe murderer in Turkey or if I was, like, like killing a dog or like, you know, these these crazy things that people normally hide and think are so weird and disgusting. Yeah. You know, I allowed it all to come up, all to come up. Yeah. And that was really beautiful for me in in, in not having judgment towards my own self because that allowed the process of change to happen much quicker and smoother. And so do you guys go back? Like, like what do you do with your list? Is it just for purely like a bark bag? To catch it's the spew, the or is, are you also going back and like, you know, meditating, praying, sorting, planning? I think Mary's gonna, she was gonna say something I was gonna say, but it's, it's not <laughs> you have to go back. I see her. She's she's, like, she's waiting on it. I know. I'm not totally <laughs> this. You know, we're all so motivated on this subject. For real, for real. The thing is with this, this idea is that. The awareness itself is the transformation. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. having the awareness, because in that moment, it's mm-hmm. so instantaneous. Mm-hmm. But when you recognize it, it shifts. Mm-hmm. It yeah. changes. You, the it's prayer true. is happening. The prayer is lightning fast, mm-hmm. and it just happens, and it's a release. You're just like, oh, oh, well, and your recognition is, right. is built in. Yeah. yeah. Because it's your intention with the brain then. Yeah. Well, and my teacher, Heather Ashamara, um, and she's at Toasty.org. You'll love her. Uh, Check that out, everybody. Yeah, she's been my teacher for the last seven years. And Heather Ashamara taught me to celebrate when I find something really ugly or yucky or or I realize I'm flawed or my ego is taking over. She made us stand up and go, yeah, I see you. Oh, my God, I am so messed up. And owning that, too. And owning the stuff that's hard and makes you sad and mm-hmm. the grief and owning that because that is you as well. So, yeah. you know, when we honor ourselves for being the totality because this, cause it's a spiritual, it's a, it's, she calls it spiritual bypass. Yeah. But when you sense. 
spiritually bypass yourself and not get in touch with your true and honest feelings, you're not really going to be at peace. Yeah. No, well, and you can't be. And and like and on on my arm, as part of my tattoo at at the top, is a crown, and it reminds me of what you were saying, and I was thinking about this you know, deserving and knowing, okay, yeah, we do deserve. Because, you know, one of the things that I've learned is that if I am ashamed of the things that are that I've gone through, that I'm thinking, feeling, et cetera, I can't talk about them. I can't learn from them. And I can't share with people what I went through and why I learned what I learned. Right. And it, and you, and, and for whoever that I would try to do that with would know my lack of sincerity mm-hmm. and would wonder, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I think awareness of what you deserve is so important. Right. What do you think, Jen? Well, yeah, that's just like what you're saying. Like, there's something crippling about holding those things in the dark. You know, like I love yeah. what Kat said, like what, whether I was a murderer in Turkey, like I'm going to write that down because this is just for me, you know? Yeah. And then once I write that down, I'm not just going to see it, but I'm going to celebrate like, oh, I'm aware of this now. Yeah. And instead of looking at it as a brokenness or a weakness, you look at it as, okay, now I can change and I can become more the woman I want to be, you know? Yeah. Like you don't have to be afraid of those dark places. So you're like totally rewarding yourself yeah, just by doing absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. And it loses like shame as things hidden in the dark. And I think one of the most powerful things I've yeah. learned is take what's in the dark and put it out in the light and lift well, it up and accept it. And there is know? no such thing as darkness. Darkness right. is just the absence of light. Right. <laughs> and I like, I love to say that yeah. even just to my own self because it reminds yeah. me. And I don't know, but do we have, and I'm not sure that you ladies are going to be able to hear, but do we have a guest with us? Can you hear me, caller? Because I've got someone that's shown online that I don't hear you. Okay. We'll keep listening and... um, Go to truthfindersnetwork.com, and we have a chat room there if anybody wants to, to join us. Um, we'll be li- I'm, I'm trying to log in there so I can talk to you anonymously, and, and I'll do that here in a second. But I just wanted to acknowledge you. I see you there. Um, and well, we've got a little bit more time to talk about that. Um, so what else, what else do you want to share with everybody? Like, is there anything else that the conversation might have stifled as we were talking that you still want to... Well, I just want to up it. I want to take a step up. Let's do it. And I want to jump up a level. And I want to say that, you know, everything that we're talking about today, we are talking about on a global level, okay? And many of you are, you know, texting me. You're emailing me. You're sending me messages on Facebook. You know, there's a lot of confusion in the media right now, and there's a lot to be... Well, a lot of people are telling me they're stressed out and they don't know what to do. And so what we're talking about today is part of that solution because as we each individually take that opportunity to have our own expansion and to bring ourselves at peace and to simplify and to allow ourselves to have that good life, everything around us starts to change and it resonates out in everything that we do from the people we work with to our family to our relationships with our spouses. So I really want to invite everyone who's listening um, to please take that opportunity to expand yourself, to help others have awareness, and not from an angry place. You know, right now we have awesome opportunity, and we are a smart planet, and we can make a change. But it has to take each and every one of us, and it has to start from within. So... There is my step up and call to action for everybody out there. And, yeah. and to do it in your own way. You don't have to do it the Mary Adams way. You can do it your own individual way. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I, I, I don't know how I was trying to think of the practicality of having, or I should say making available to myself 
a, a mode of operation to get to, to continually be able to have access to something to brain dump. You know, I don't know what would work best for me because I make lists and I make notes and I write stuff down. But this is a different kind of thing, a different kind of list, so to speak. Um, and I don't know how much of it. I mean, I think if I was just sitting, meditating, or whatever, writing would work out great. But unless I was in that position, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I think I. I would either need like a voice, uh, a mic, um, you know, where instead of texting, you can hit the microphone and and you can voice it. That might work. Evernote is really great for that because okay. you can do the voice. You can just do the voice and make it a voice it. recording, or you, and you can mark your location, and then you can take pictures of your writing and upload it, so you keep it all together in one like digital I folder. I like that. And, you can access it and that's an app. The cloud. It's an app, but you can access it online and everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a really great place to just collect thoughts. Yeah. Wow, I really yeah. like that. Evernote. Okay, I'm gonna have to remember that. I'm making notes <laughs> of, of really important things that I want everyone to remember before we part today, but. Yeah, Paul and I use Evernote. We absolutely adore it. You can have shared notebooks. I was just going to ask you. Yeah. yeah it's really <laughs> I was going to be like, can you do shared? Yeah, you can like add to each other's yeah. notes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Be like, babe, you're in the you're in my way. I got to I got to make this note. Family really? notes. Really? Family notes. <laughs> family note time. Yep. Take on a, a new uh, mm-hmm. meaning of of the word family gathering. <laughs> <laughs> That is so cool, though. No, I really like the whole concept of brain dumping um, and just the abandonment literally and figuratively because you got to just abandon some of those things because, you know, when, for me, sometimes things will just nag at me and all kinds of different things for different reasons. And um, I get... I think real stressed out sometimes just knowing that I'm not tending to that one thing when I'm trying to juggle a lot of balls. So I'll probably just have a little piece of paper that I keep by me, you know. And even if I maybe just write one or two keywords that I know will spark it later so that I can go, you know, back on my lunch hour break or whatever and actually physically take a little bit more time you know, until I feel like not nagging at me anymore. Because cause the stuff that nags at me and, and distracts me, cheats me of time. And, man, by the end of the day, how much time is that mm-hmm. when you add it all up? Um, okay, well, to tie up a few loose ends, log in better on my chat room, which is on the True Finders Network webpage. And we are just talking tonight about tools of transformation. This is Make That Change on TruthFinders Network. And you can go to TruthFinders Network and chat with us in the chat room. And um, not taking calls at the moment. We've got a live panel going. And it's kind of tricky technically, but I'm hoping to work that out. And if I don't, well... We just are glad that you're here, and again, you can go to the chat room and at least communicate with us, and we can put your questions and thoughts on air and and talk about it. But um, I've got with me tonight Mary Adams. We were talking with her a little bit ago about her tool, one of her tools, I should say, of transformation, brain dumping. Um, And I've also got with me Katerina Edwards-Roy and Jennifer Pennington. Um, But right now, I kind of want to hear a little bit from Kat. Um, She she is a very dear friend of mine and an amazing woman. Um, She is a dynamic coach. She loves helping others and radically transforming their lives, and I've seen her do it. Um, She is an author, an artist, a catalyst, a mentor. Uh, She's just, she's amazing. Um, one of the things that she likes to say on on her page where you can you know find out about her is that um wild plus soulful teacher author artist and mentor and the be you to the fullest um is is kind of the best outlet and and what she offers in those platforms as a teacher and an author and a mentor and again I've seen her do that as well um and tonight I'm hoping she'll talk a little bit about 
her her concept of of tools of transformation. I don't know. I know you have you've got to have more than one. So just I don't know. Throw throw at us whatever whatever you want to share with everybody. Well, I think that the brain dumping and and also doing the work of Iron Katie, just like Mary was saying, is is very beneficial. Doing work on your belief system. I mean, that's a big thing that I do with my clients. We do a lot of belief system cleaning up. You know, people. Oh my gosh, I've never heard of that. Well, okay, so belief belief system system cleaning up. Wow. Yeah. So you know how you get all these shitty belief systems from society and your parents. Yeah. And And folks, if it's negative, it's it's shitty. (laughs) Right, right. If it's negative, it's shitty. If it feels horrible, let's just make that clear. And it it totally disrupts your flow of living your life, and it throws a big wrench in it. Like, there's probably some cleanup to do. One thing that I like to teach my clients too is just like, say, everybody, stay with me for a second. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Where did you feel that in your body? Your soul. I felt right it right here, in, like, my like, right in my center. Right in center. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Say no, no, no. No, no, no. Where did you feel it? I felt it, like. I felt it in my pelvis. I felt it right it in my chest. Good, did it? No. no. I felt exactly. like I was. It was heavy. Yeah. Like, like heavy. heaving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, weighty. Like. Exactly. And not in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so that is one way that people tend that I show my clients, that I tend to show them how to identify truth in their body. So if you can really understand where these things are happening, for me... That is I the guess, most coolest thing. I have so never hard. done that. Yeah, so, so if you yeah. ask yourself a question, your body will literally give you the answer. You know, it does, and we talk about that all the time, we but in a different it, way. In a different way, and, and if kids could understand this, yeah. you know that this is where it is, how this applies to belief systems and your just the way you see the world and how you experience your life and consequently the problems that you have in your life or the lack thereof problems is by really being able to be really tuned in with these feeling mm-hmm. centers in your body. And when you're not listening to this stuff, that's when your life gets all out of whack and out of balance. So you yeah. can literally think a thought, maybe something that your parents gave you when you were younger and think, oh, I'm never going to be good at anything. Where does that feel in your body? Yeah. Does that feel like somebody just sucker punched you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and as kids, we, we grow up like that. So let's just say that um, that is that 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 was mine. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, when when you're working on or cleaning up these belief systems, I mean, what 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 does that like specifically look like? That's how I, it ties in with. Mary's idea of brain dumping. You can brain dump with belief systems. Yeah. And in fact, I do this with clients a lot. And, and All the so, beliefs on this list, list gotta go. Well, and it's not even <laughs> you know? that they gotta go. It, it's, let's, let's question them. Because yeah. Honestly, you don't have to toss them out. They will take themselves out because it's just, they, they don't hold up anymore because it's like when you see enough truth and the, and the mm-hmm. vision and the veil kind of split. That's so true. I mean, true. it disappears because the truth is all there is, really. Oh, it is. The truth of who all of us are is really what's at the bottom of all of it, and, and I've been through that process, and I live like that, and that's and that I, I'm sense. a living inquiry. Like, I change all the time. I've noticed this in myself. I'm wildly inconsistent, and I'm wildly... You're consistently inconsistent. I'm consistently inconsistent. <laughs> because, because I'm always yeah. changing. Yeah, I love and that's that. That's why people perceive me yeah. as being kind of out there and wild and passionate, and and that's why I call myself wild and soulful because yeah, I, I'm very dynamic. I change around. Sometimes I'm quiet. Sometimes I'm loud. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm this. Sometimes I'm that. I'm never anything at one time, and that's the state that is really empowerment and freedom, and and when you can really learn to embody that and feel that and and move with that, that is the spirit of God. If you it want to is. get really deep with me for a second. If you're moving with the spirit of God and you're just allowing yourself to be a part of all of it, the negative, the positive, all of it, you life yeah. becomes ecstatic. Like life is literally ecstatic. I wake up in the morning and I'm just like like you just feel it. It's just like all of this energy running through you all the time. And I wake up in the morning and I make like lion noises at Paul and I'm like ah! and I'm just I wake up in the morning and I'm like, ah! And we wrestle. Oh, and we your husband, by the way. 
I might have to try that. Yeah, you should Can you imagine what Marty will do if I'm like, roar, roar. Like, I want you to know when you're roaring. <laughs> 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 you know, you know, you know, I just want you to look your profile. I am ready to roar. Are you ready for me to roar? the conversation to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even if you're just having it with yourself, that's okay too. Yeah. You know, I remember when I was a young single mom and I was like always talking to myself. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I figured that out when one of my kids said, Mommy, are we talking? <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. I talk to myself. Oh, wow. But, I mean, seriously, I think we have to have those conversations, um, and the more you do it, like with anything, the easier it gets. Yeah. Um, and um, so, I like I like that you would combine that with with what she was talking about, and with what you were talking about. By, in other words, like, um, because and when I said, you know, like this is the list of beliefs I need to get rid of. And you said, no, you don't necessarily have to get rid of them because my reaction was that. But somebody else's reaction might be, whoa, I, I, that, is, that, that ain't even me. Like, I, ain't, I, can't, I don't even know if I can get rid of my beliefs. But how exciting is it to think that you can maintain all of Because I, I think that even a negative belief is, is still dear just because it's something that's been a part of you for your whole life and is usually a part of you because of someone or something that's profound. Right. right. So to not, like, think, um, have, and, and the work that you have to do to get rid of something versus change something, that's, that's really empowering, too. Mm -hmm. It's true. And the, the interesting thing is that You're right. These, these these belief systems that people have are their armor. They have it up really, really tight. And I've I've witnessed so many people's belief systems. Like I can I instantly spot them. But and it's and it's for me to learn discernment as to like how much I can go with someone or how much they can really handle in that moment. And, yeah. And it's, it's, it's very. I've gotten myself into trouble trying to help people clear stuff too fast. And yeah. It freaks them out. And it totally is disorienting. And so that's one of the things that I say is that I don't willy nilly just like say, hey, do this, this, and this, and you'll be free of all belief systems. No, I, this is a process that I've been perfecting for like four years. Just, yeah. just really getting to the how you can actually be that's, that's a really safely, good point. Safely people without need to take the people. time. Yeah, like you need to take the time, and this is part of like what Mary was talking about mm -hmm. deserving. Like you deserve to take the time. Right. And Things don't happen fast. I mean, we'd all love to just, you know, bam. And some things are just like that. Some, some things, things are bam. But, I mean, there are a lot of things that that, that take a long time. And, um, you know, like what losing weight, you're supposed to lose that weight slowly um, so that it's healthy, so that you're not destructive to your body in any way, and so that it stays. Mm -hmm. And exercise is an exact same So, way. I mean, that's what we're talking yeah. about, but just for our for our heart and our souls and our minds so that we can feel better. Exactly. It's almost like brushing your teeth every day. You don't need to, like, use an entire bottle of toothpaste to yeah. go and, like, yeah, make that's your a gums analogy. bloody. Yeah, like, huh. you know, but when you start brushing your teeth, it's just like you just want to do it, maintaining and consistent. So, for that's me, so true. with mm -hmm. belief, for me, it's not been, like, all in one fell swoop where you mm -hmm. just, like, clear all of them because it doesn't really stick. For me, it's almost as if they, when they come up. So yeah. being able to see the stressful thought that's coming up and, and in that moment, you stop for a second and you're just like, whoa, it's true. Like, yeah. Because the, no one is that feedback for anyone ever because we're surrounded by people who are all like, we are all in the same like trough, you know, like we're all kind of the same head level and when one person pops up, it's like, you just want to cut, people want to cut it down because it's, not like the rest. Definitely. And, and I definitely encourage everybody to not, to, to be okay with not being like the rest. 
Um, and I don't know. I, I want to know what you guys' thoughts are on this, Mary and, and Jennifer. Well, I, you know, I love what Katarina is sharing. And, and I've had the opportunity to be a part of Katarina's life for quite a while now. And to watch her in her process and to watch her as she's yeah. brought in clients and, and has her different coaching experiences and be able to, you know, mirror and share that. Um, and what Katarina is talking about is so fundamentally important to, is. to understand. And, and I love what you're saying about the process. You know, when transformation is a journey and yeah. there are certain pieces that we get and we hang on to and we run with it yes. and we get it. And then there's deeper pieces that take time they to understand. Do. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, for me, um, especially as a minister and holding space for, for people uh, who are in transition and ready to die, as well as helping people through cancer to the end and helping people through sudden death. And it took me a long time to learn how to be comfortable in that place. Mm-hmm. And it took yeah. a lot of lessons, and it took a lot of times of going in the bathroom and crying. Yep. And, and, and also sometimes saying to people, I don't know what to say. All I can say is my hand is out, and if you need me, here's my phone number you call. And they say sometimes, you know, saying little is, is the best. But I, I, you're, it's so important to remember, um, you know, I like to tell people, you know, if it took you, how long did it take you to get there? You know, you've, you've been sucking your life up in this way, as you say, for how long? Five years. Well, just exactly how fast are we going to undo something? I mean, you can put a little bit of, you know, just some logic and practicality into it and think to yourself, wow, you know, like, what is realistic? Mm-hmm. You know, what is one year, one year can be really fast. To, to, to modify something that's so long, but then it could happen overnight. So if it's taking you a long time, that is okay. I mean... Well, and realize that you are collectively from zero, from the time before conception, and whatever you heard and learned through the womb, because you know the baby's from absolutely. here, absolutely. through everything. Absolutely. So you are carrying with you that infant child. You are carrying with you that toddler, that young child. And so... You know, the totality of honoring yourself at every single level, every, yes. mm-hmm. because you are that infant still, you are that child still, you are that teenager still. You know, I, I, for me, that honoring makes my life a little more complete, and it makes mm-hmm. the bad times lessons rather than tragedies and, and things that are going to hold me back. There is, and I'm fully, con- this this is one of my scariisms, like, should be on my 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 tombstone, I mean, even if, I think even if they cremate me, that I should have some kind of tombstone yeah, so we'll for that, that and also so for, because <laughs> I think some people need a place to go to visit, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I made myself lose my train of thought <laughs> on my, on my scariism. Um, I think that, I think that there, I, I got it. There is a treasure in every tragedy. Mm-hmm. It, it's our duty to find it. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 there, mm-hmm. okay. And if you never find it, that does not in any way negate the truth that it's there. Mm-hmm. The the truth then becomes you didn't find it. Yeah. And I mean, so many minute, finite things are found. <laughs> You know, how hard it can it be? Well, it's only as hard as that effort. And when you reach out, you can always find a reinforcement for that. So I really want to encourage anybody, especially if, if you're, like, resisting that thought, mm-hmm. the truth is there is a treasure in every tragedy. Mm-hmm. You have to choose to find it. Yeah, and I think that, like, what they were talking about, like, being, like, taking the time to find it and being gentle with yourself while being you're gentle. looking. And that's, you know, and, like, understanding that it that it does take time, like, like, just kind of 
reiterating a little bit of what you guys were saying about mm -hmm. that, you know, it's taken how many years or how many traumas or how many hours of tragedy to create those negative belief systems to yeah. give you those those wrong thoughts. Yeah, it's like yeah. why how why how could you possibly yeah. do that to yourself to so hurry be it? Be gentle, be kind. Be, and that is being love gentle. yourself. Yeah. Like, you can't tell a two year old just stop. Like you have to be gentle with that two year old and, and give that two year old a safe place where they will stop and build the trust with that two year old so that they listen quickly, you right. know, and like so it just it takes time to heal and so it's it okay. Does. It's okay. It's okay. It does. Time. Like how many yeah. of the people that we know Hands down, the people that I know are way more inclined to to, to right out the gate deny themselves the time. Yeah, okay. in a big way, like yeah. something that that would that would be fast in a year. Right. This person then could be unhappy, you know, in a week. But we're in that life mode. We're we're geared to be in that life mode. A hurry, hurry, fast, fast, fast. Right. Well, also the ego has its own defense mechanism be <laughs> and that stand in the way of actually being able to take a good look at itself and that's having true. having mm, that's true genuine eyes looking at a real situation. I wonder okay. how you could use the idea of brain dumping with the ego the way that you did beliefs. Like the ego, I mean, like, like I'm. It's so similar. Beliefs and ego are are like the thought forms are kind of similar not though, because, because I mean, beliefs could uncover could encompass anything from death to money, mm -hmm. you know. But ego, like, like they say, five year old kids are egocentric. Mm -hmm. They think egocentric is when it everything is as it pertains to you. So I'm talking about like if ego's big, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Like the the belief of any ego related belief, like how, how what would it look like to use the brain dumping? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, yeah, and that's definitely yeah. So what Mary just reminded me of was the forgiveness work that Paul and I were doing with money. You know, yeah. so basically what you're doing is these individual thought forms that are coming up for you. Um. Basically, you think about these memories that you had with these certain situations, and yeah. then you can do the forgiveness work of saying, I forgive you, I'm sorry, I love you. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Oh, Pono Pono is like it's an adaptation of it, but really what you're doing is you're just releasing yourself from the energy of that. You're basically saying, I, I release myself. Like, I, I, I ask God to release me from this. And it's the task, like the actual, like sometimes just the doing of it. Yeah. You don't have to feel it. It's it, not a it, it, you, you, you yield to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even I've been doing my own forgiveness work in the past five days. And, you know, I, I'm i constantly cleaning house. And this really, really did make a huge dent. I've been, like, floating on cloud nine for serious for, like, the past five days. Just because I've been in that energy of, like, really doing cleaning. Yeah. And, and it feels good. You know, and it doesn't mean cleaning doesn't mean you have to get it all perfect, or that you have to be squeaky clean, or that you have to be perfectionist. No, it just means feeling good. It just means like being able to be in a state where you're like, yeah, this is my life, and it feels pretty good. Mm -hmm. you know, and what doesn't, you know, focus on it, figure it out, talk about it, and um, like last night when we were talking about the forgiveness. Um, you know, you guys were, were talking about how you'd been working on this list for months. Yeah, well, it was a couple of days we had been doing it, and then we were hanging out with Jen. Well, maybe it was you'd been talking about doing it. We'd been talking about doing it, okay. and then it was procrastinating, and then, you know, we finally sat down and just did it. Yeah, um, I would have never thought about doing it like that, mm -hmm. um, but, but it, 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 again, it's a matter of, Taking what is inside of your of your mind and your heart and your soul, and and organizing, it, you know, and putting some of the things that are weighty enough that that they're pulling you in a way that you don't want to be pulled. Right, it's a cross purpose because because we're talking about tools of transformation, mm -hmm. and it's important to remember that. Landing on your feet 
I mean, you know, babies aren't born walking. You know, they learn to walk. And, you know, landing on your feet, as I like to call it, is is is, is a skill, like riding a bike. It's, yeah. it's hard to learn. And once you get it, I mean, you can do it, usually, from then on. But it's work, you know? Um, and and, and, and it, it continues to be work. I mean, some, you know, unless you are working out all the time, you can't just hop on your bike, you know, and go, 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 just because you know how. Right. You know, so, um, but I just think that one of the things that motivates me to want to do this show, why it's called Make That Change, is to just always have an opportunity with the show to, to, to talk about things that help people make that change. Because on a daily basis, when I'm talking to people and I'm hearing their stories, you know, um, either success or, or not, um, I want to share those successes because I want I want to ter- I want to share mine. I want to share the ones that I hear because I I hate seeing it yeah. when people aren't landing on their feet. Yeah. And we you can, yeah. you know, I really believe that you can. Like it shouldn't matter. Like I have seen people be okay, and 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 you know, there's there's a lot of wiggle room with that word okay. But like I have seen people be okay on the meagerest of budgets. Mm-hmm. You know, on on the on the in the worst of health, and you know, with the smallest of families, you know, and I and all of the above even, and um, and it's not an easy thing. No one here tonight is saying that any of this is easy. Mm-hmm. All we're saying, this is stuff that we know actually works, and um. You know, and if it's if it's not maybe applicable to you at this moment, hopefully it will be at some time. But there's probably someone that you know um, that that you can share some of this with, and I hope that you do. Um, you know, this is a, a, a nonprofit show. I mean, we are here just to try to share something that will help someone in some way, um, and with the belief that one conversation can become a million conversations when we use the tools of our time, like blog talk radio and such. Um, I want to just kick it off to my guest, Jennifer Pennington. I want to tell you a little bit about her. Um, I just met her recently, and I, I just have to say that I'm re- I've been really blessed, and, and it's one of the reasons why I wanted her here with us tonight. Um and I, I've just been profoundly touched with touched by her, um, and I'll just share with you. You know, she she is. You heard her earlier talking about little kids. She's got remarkable social skills for kids, and she teaches high high school or high functioning autism. I'm trying to read this and and incorporate it with what I know because I know that she works at a, a local area middle school. Um, when when that. Um, my daughter went to actually. Um, she's got a passion for freedom, change, and empowerment. Um, she's so so bright in in so many ways, and I love the outlook that she brings to every discussion that that I've had with her. Um, and I just found out as we were talking earlier that you are the one that actually got Cat and Paul going on on their Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm really excited about about learning about that, and and you know I don't know if that was the tool that that you wanted to talk about, but if not, I w- I really want to hear about that too. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean it's just um, it was I like, guess an honor to share that because I know that that tool for me, the forgiveness book specifically, has been very empowering, and um and just remembering you know throughout like it taking years, like I started making this list when I was probably 16, you know, like, wow, and and then just, and get, being gentle and understanding, being gentle with myself and understanding that it just takes time, it takes time to be honest with yourself, the more honest and gentle you are with yourself, the, the more, the deeper you can go, and, um, and so, yeah, it just takes time, but, um, yeah, what I was going to share, though, is, like in response to that, like we're talking about 
taking, getting those belief systems, those negative beliefs, the unforgiveness, um, and taking those out or getting those, like giving those a space to just fall away, right? And um, But then what are we putting back in? And so that's what the tool that I've recently been using a lot, and um, it's kind of interesting. It's, I call it a contract, um, okay. and, and I do that. I call it a contract because that's when I was growing up, when I got in trouble, that's how my dad would discipline me. Oh, okay, would write that a makes contract. sense. And it was a very loving way to handle, like we would discuss it, we had negotiations, we made compromises, you know. Wow. Yeah, it was beautiful, and then we would sign it, and then he would put it up on the refrigerator until the wow, discipline cool. was over. Yeah, it's really wise. And so, so with that, as I'm beginning to see these negative belief systems, like, for example, um, the negative belief system that, like, I need someone else to tell me I'm okay. That's a huge one, right? Like, I need, um, I need, I need my friends to say, no, like, you're beautiful, you're good, you know, mm-hmm. whether verbally or not. And, and that's just not a healthy belief system. It's not, um, it causes me to make decisions that, um, that I wouldn't normally make. It causes me to go a different direction because I need someone to tell me I'm okay, but really I want to do this instead, but I'm not going to because I need that approval, you know? So as I started to get rid of that, I was like, okay, so then what's, what's my truth then? And, 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 and so just spent a lot of time. I was in Puerto Rico, and I remember I was sitting on, a, on the 20th floor of a penthouse looking at the Atlantic Ocean, you know, from one end of Puerto Rico to the other, and um, just writing down, you know, like, they're like, okay, I'm done with this idea that I need someone else to tell me I'm okay. Um, so what's my truth? And it's just beginning to write out a contract. Um, so you're saying you 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 identify, like, a negative um, thing mm-hmm. and you replace it with a like truth. A, like a promise to myself. A, a promise. Truth. Yeah. And, and then you actually make a contract. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I don't need, yeah, it's very powerful. So, I don't need, so the lie or the negative belief system is, are you, you need someone else to tell you you're okay. So, then I find the truth of, I don't really need anyone else to tell me I'm okay. I'm a beautiful Yeah, I think that's an important connection because a negative is a lie. Yeah. I want to really put that out there because that's where you really identify with the truth because, you know, if it's a lie, then you have to replace it with the truth, which is positive. Right. And so, so cool. and then you have to find your own truth. I can't have Kat tell me what my truth is or right. tell me what my truth is. I can be around beautiful women like y'all and hear truth, but what it comes down to is I've got to take that to that together and make it. my own truth. It. Yeah, because then I own it, right? So lie, I need people to tell me I'm okay. Truth. No, like, I'm a beautiful, strong woman. Like, I can tell myself I'm okay. And then, okay, so then contract. Contract, what do I commit? And I actually write, I commit from this day forward to not make a decision based on the opinions of others. And I, make, awesome. and I make an action step, and I keep that. And I have a list of those in my journal. That's so you know? cool. So, um, yeah, it's just a powerful tool. So that's, that's what I wanted to share. Yeah. I love that. I yeah. love that, too. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, gee. This is all beautiful with how all of what we've shared is kind of woven together, but that's exactly well. Um, you know, I happen to know that recently you you mentioned that, that you've been to Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. so I know the story about that, and I was really touched by the fact that you, you know when you were talking about it. Um, so I was hearing about it for the, for the first time. I'm hearing you say that it was something that you did for yourself. Yes. And that is going to, like, like years from now, I'm going to remember that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to remember the tone in your voice and the look on your face. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were talking about this past tense, mm-hmm. right? Like, this isn't something that you were going to do. You just had done it. Yeah. And it was everything that you intended it to be. Yeah. And yeah. more. Yeah. And, um... You know, so I just for for those of you who are listening, you know, just remember that, um, like these are things for transformation. That trip transformed her, but she had to do a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. I think to get to the point where she could do that. God, I love that, Jen. And you know, I one of my best friends. She dreamed of having her own Harley. And it was a dream. It was a dream. And she had a jar, and she kept putting change in there. And you know, single mom, <laughs> four kids. 
trying to make it all work, you know? Yeah. And she just got her Harley six months ago. Oh, my God. It is the most beautiful thing to watch her. Not only did she achieve it, but she worked her ass off yeah. for it. And it took time. That's right. Yeah. I want to keep repeating the time. Exactly. And it's taking time for her to learn how to ride this big bike. Oh, my and gosh. And so she is taking that time. She's riding the back roads. She's being patient. Wow. She's learning. And and it's so beautiful and she because that. every time I see her, she is more powerful and more dynamic and more kick-ass and more shining because she's finally living her truth. That's At so cool. 50-something years old, she's finally honoring that that Harley is what she's wanted since she was 20. Yeah, and, and like... The truth in that is, is that she had to work her butt off, you know, and, and yeah, you're talking about hard work, but that's what it takes. I mean, if we're sitting around talking about what we don't have or we can't do, um, you know, it's probably a little bit about what we're not doing or we're not willing to do or, you know, not willing to wait, not willing to work hard, I think, because it takes that commitment. Okay, so I agree with you. At the same time, I feel like that is also a belief system there, this idea of working hard, you know, because that is something that is strenuous and painful and, and, dr- and it's drudgery. Well, not necessarily. I think it can be fun, too. Like, like Listen to what I'm saying. I just want to make know. sure yes, yes. That, that people that aren't taking my saying working hard, that from my perspective, I'm thinking of it. I want to clarify That's this awesome. as something for people because because not everybody that thinks into. that way. Yeah, right. absolutely. You, you and your husband have a business, and you guys, you guys love it. You guys have been doing this together, and and it's been bringing your family together. Some people, when they hear the word work has to be hard, they do what my husband used to do and just work. No, yeah, I yeah, know, and it does know? not have to be hard. So what I'm saying is, an antidote for that is really inspired action. You know, yeah. You, when you are living in your how truth cool. and really change, actually change those words. Yeah. that, the words are really powerful in how you look they at it. They are. It really is. Well, Word of hard, slash out, inspired, inspired action. action. <laughs> All right, so I have something to share in here. This is fun, okay? And most of our age group knows about the Rocky Horror Picture Show and the oh, song yeah. The Time Warp, okay? So here's something fun. And you can use that song, and that song kind of makes you feel good because you start moving around, and I suggest you turn it on. But change is just a step to your left. And sometimes it's easy, and sometimes it's it's not not. so easy, Mm -hmm. and it's worth doing. And so, you know, get up, do the time warp, start moving around, and take that step to your left, Yep. And go forward. And sometimes just taking the step and doing it, like exercise, you know, you don't necessarily want to do it, but then you get up and you get moving and mm-hmm. you're so glad that you did and you're yeah. loving it. Yeah. Um, move a muscle, move your mind. And, and you know what? I do think, too, that, that working hard really does. I, lo- I love the way that it, that brings out the fact that our perspectives really are so different because of our belief system. Like you said, it's a belief system. And for me, there are, I've worked really hard and, and hated it. Just freaking hated it. Yeah. Um, and I've worked really, really hard and, and, and loved it and wasn't even getting paid when I've done things that I was passionate about. So, um, but I do think that um, good things are are worth whatever they require, whether it's good or bad or short or, or time-consuming or fun or not, or whatever. I mean, you know, finding out what your goals are, if they're important enough to you, you know, if you're thinking about them a lot, if you're, shoot, my age and you're still thinking about it, or it's all you thought about all your life. It's what you want to do when you grow up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, those those things. 
Um, it could be a relationship with someone, a family member. Um, it could be a relationship that you want to happen in your life. Um, it could be maintaining something or achieving, you know, just whatever it is. Um, I mean, nothing, nothing that we're talking about is intended to sound like it's just an easy, quick thing. But you can't change something when you're doing nothing. And you don't want doing nothing to become part of the problem. Right? And I think when you're doing nothing, I, I know for me, sometimes when I'm doing nothing, I don't know about y'all, but does it make you feel, like, worse about it and, like, talking less about it? I mean, I don't know. It seems like it... it that's also another... You just don't do it. I, the other thing for me is that there's some times when you really do need to do nothing. I've had so many conversations with Mary where... She and I were just having like a really terrible week. And mm -hmm. the idea of doing something was just wretched. <laughs> yeah. Wretched. Like, yeah. it was horrible. Especially when we were both in illness. You know, and we really just needed to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And sit with that discomfort of doing nothing. Because I feel like it's something where in order to be okay with doing quote unquote hard work and, and like tasks and stuff like that to really fully enjoy that, you also need to fully enjoy the doing of nothing. Because there's no preference for either. It's just what what's happening. Right. Well and oftentimes I really feel like, you know, we jump we you know, we feel like we have to make immediate decisions about everything in our lives. And, and a lot of times we make the wrong decision because we feel pressured to make a decision, and so we make a decision that does not support the moment. I am so glad you said that. You know, that. and sometimes, I, and when I need mo when I need time, I'll say to somebody, you know what? I need to think about all of this and digest it. I'll get back to you. That is such an okay thing to say, y'all. I really want to encourage all of you all to really just embrace that. Um, one of the rules that I have for myself is if you don't know what to do, you do nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love and that. That's really wise. One, yeah. one of my tools, um, just one of them that I have, is, you know, I know you're not supposed to make decisions in emotion. And, and for me, getting excited and happy is, is an emotion that I do not want to make. I mean, like, you think that would be a good time, but it's not. I'm, you know, I'm excited, and I'm I'm not in a decision-making mode. Um, so, you know, I could be frustrated, angry, or whatever. I don't like making decisions and so forth in those, in those places of emotion. And so I've made starting from when I was little, list of rules for myself. Mm -hmm. And I try, when I'm, when I'm feeling myself getting caught up in something, I can feel it. It's like physical and in indicators come. And um, I will just rel relent, back off a little bit, and go to the default rules that I've already created for myself when I was calm. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I just go by them without question and without wiggle room, period. That's a really interesting point that you're making about making rules for yourself. I feel like that's a big part of all of this piece of making change, too, is because the world's constantly making rules for you, mm -hmm. and you're just defaulting to those rules rather than thinking, like, hey, maybe these rules aren't necessarily the ones for me to live by. I can make my own rules now. Thank you very much for your input, but I'm my own boss. Yeah, well, and that's what brings me back. That's what the contract is. That's the concept I'm creating yeah. my rule book. Yeah, what I'm saying you know because then as an example, I gave I wasn't as specific, but I mean I get to specific actions like when I'm looking for other people to affirm me. These are the things that I do. So like my contract is say I will never again use manipulation to cause someone to give attention. That oh, so you know, like, awesome. You get, like, really specific about yeah. the actions that are coming yeah. out of you. And you say, I'm done with that negative action. I'm done with whatever X, Y, and Z. You know, like I will, so never, I will never, I will never act in such a way. What was my big one a long time ago? I will never act in such a way solely to get the attention of the opposite sex. I will only make the choices I want to make out of the 
like the love for myself and what I want to see happen in my life. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is a life-changing commitment. I mean, I really saw my life turn. Yeah. When I I will never again do something well, to get a man's attention. I remember yeah. when I when I was dating my husband, I knew that in the past I found myself looking backwards, thinking, "Wow, I was too assertive in whatever situation," and that didn't work. <laughs> So when I met Marty and I knew, you know, this is the guy I want, Mm -hmm. I made a commitment to myself to never call him or or go see him unless he invited me. And I kept that commitment for a year and a half. Like, I can't even believe I did it. (laughs) Really. But then I think to myself about, I I remember vividly, even in this moment, how badly I wanted him and I wanted that relationship and I wanted it to work. Like... I knew that was important for him to pursue me, and I for a lot of reasons. And so I, but I stuck to it, and I made myself a commitment. Like I didn't actually write it out, but I did make a contract. Like I promised to myself, maybe like I had never done before at that point in my life. And and oh God, it it was hard. There was even a couple of times I stopped. Him. Like I drove and went and saw what he was doing. <laughs> I can say that because he knows, but I'm just, I'm being yeah, honest. It worked out. I'm married. just being honest. <laughs> but I no, mean, it was better than honest. calling him. Yeah. It was better than calling him, and 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 I was honest. I told him I did it. You know, it wasn't being like, <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> I did. But but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Sometimes it. You know, you. I'm trying to say. Yeah, if you you gotta go to task with it, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. don't hold out on yourself. Do what you need to do to commit to these things that you engage in to have a better <laughs> life. And 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 I love that again because that's the whole thing of living by your truth. Because that's your that was your truth. It was that's what you needed. Yeah, but like like I see some of the problem we'll see is we'll write that down like okay, don't call them, and then it becomes this rule book for how to act in mm. situations, and someone else tries to apply your truth, but that's not what they needed. That's why and you know, he does this to this realtor. day, so all that hard work, yeah. he's still pursuing me yeah. to this day. Oh, yeah, I know. You true. know, and inviting me to do that, to pursue him to this yeah. day. Yeah. And, and also to do something different. Yeah. You know, we get stuck in that rut, and, and it's been Oh, my gosh, you're so right. I, I have been divorced for 10 years, and I've had, you know, a couple of Kudos to your mama. <laughs> I'm just saying. A couple relationships, but, you know, they didn't end up going where I wanted them to go. And the deal is, is that I have to have integrity with myself and what I really want in my life and what I want these last years of my life to look like because I'm 47. But you've honored yourself for such a long time. That's so awesome. Well, and it's, you know, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing when we go out there and we try something different. Because, yep. you know, especially when you are going through a lot of transformation, you're constantly changing. And your picker gets stuck on the old program. <laughs> and I had a situation where Santa Monica Volleyball Pro Player came into my spectrum, and it was what I used to choose from, a surfer. That's who I am. And, boy, I latched on to that so quick. I was, I was on that. Because in my area, there's not a lot of those anymore. And right. it was wonderful to watch myself. And I was also able to take a step back and say, you know what? I, being an integrity to myself, is a wonderful person to be friends with. This is not an inspection. I'm very happy in my life. I don't need that to fill me. I don't need that to do anything for me. I already am full of love. I right. have the love in yeah. all around me. I am surrounded by love 24-7, and I don't need someone to fill that space. Now, would I love to have somebody to play with, and would I love to be able to have really deep experiences with someone that can be in the same spectrum? Yes, but that is not going to define me or completely me. And now... And when that's your okay, so you've been divorced. You've been working on this for ten years. So we're just saying, you know, that's the thing. Okay, like you deserve the best, and if the best haven't come in that time frame, then this is precious, perfect time. 
whether it's 10 years or one year or longer. And the perfect because people showed up during those 10 years to teach me about what I want. Yeah. And I love them. And we have friendship and we're tight. Because I don't want to end the friendship with a connection. It's just, well, and that, it's not, just that's, not what I'm looking for at this point in my life. The fact that you have been patient maybe also lends itself to the fact that you were able to maintain those relationships. And that pressure was maybe released a little bit because cause, cause that's the thing. Um, right now, if you're looking at your life and you're feeling frustrated, and it could be somebody that isn't as at peace, with the same situation as like what you're going through, for example. So if that person could um, brain dump on how they feel about it, go through, clean up, quote, and, and you can't see me, but I'm saying, quote, unquote, clean up your beliefs. Um, make yourself forgiveness list. Um, call out some of the things in your life that are negative, which for this I issue is a lie, which has to be replaced by a positive truth, and then a contract made out. And again, I really want to highlight what you were saying, Jennifer, about being specific, because um, that's like the teacher in you, and I love that. But honestly, that's what we're talking about here. Because I don't do that. Like, that's not something that I do. So if I want to know how to do that, like, for real, that is so important to be specific. Mm -hmm. And I know that the more specific that I am, the, the better results I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. um, well, we are ready for our third break. Um, it just blows my mind. Um, and when we come back... Um, I will. Sh I want to share a little bit um, on some of the thoughts that I had while I was thinking about the the concept of having tools for transformation. Um, you know, tonight we've just been talking about the concept of tools of transformation, like as in plural, more than one. So don't don't ever forget that when you're up against a wall or you're you know, hitting a plateau or just whatever awkward bump you you might be at, there are a gazillion, and I mean gazillion, <laughs> solutions to it. And we have, like, barely scratched the surface, and I mean that sincerely. Um, and when I was thinking about, you know, my part that I want to share to, to, the, to the discussion, um, I was thinking about the, the idea of confidence, the idea of courage, and the idea of character. And I realized that those three things really, for me, are are, are um, gears that fit together for one overall purpose. They all help me with the other one. Um, and I'll share a situation that, that I actually experienced today and I realized as I was going through it, um, if I wanted there to be change, that I was going to have to have some confidence, that I was going to have to have some courage, um, and that I was going to really have to be true to my character. Um, the rules that I've set for myself, um, because I, I think, you know, my standards for myself on character are really, really high. Not that I always achieve them, you know. Um, I, I do fall short of them. But it doesn't change, like, what they are, you know. Um, and some, I can honestly say, I never break. Um, but there are certain things, you know, like the basics, like lying and, you know, cheating and stealing and backstabbing, you know, just, just those kind of things, you know, your moral, moral character um, and that integrity, um, I just, I am very hard on, hard, hard on my own self, and I like to see that in others. Um, so, you know, in this situation, that was really important to me. Um, having courage is also really important, because in this situation, I'm having to decide where to draw the line, because I'm in, 
you know, I'm a businesswoman. I, ha I have a company. And, um, you know, I'm in a situation where a, a certain account is, is actually costing me more than I'm benefiting. Um, you know, and, and that that is in many ways. Um, so, but in order to to, you know, get rid of that, I have to pinch off a bit of an income stream, right? And I have to I have to have the confidence that I can replace that and the courage, you know, to, to go forth in that confidence um, and to have that faith. Um, because, you know, if we're being honest, faith, you know, you have you, a, a faith that a person who has, and I'm not just, I'm not just talking about like the faith, the kind of faith we have, what we believe in, but the, the amount of the, the actual faith in itself, which is in what we don't see, because that takes courage, like a lot of courage. At least it does for me. Um, you know, I'm also having to the people that I work with. They're they're affected by this too. So I'm having to say to them, you know, okay, yeah, if we cut ourselves off from this, you know, the, the, we have an end game. You know, like there's an end game for the hurt and frustration and drama that we're all experiencing both with this account and among each other trying to cope with it on a daily basis. Um, you know, because these guys, you know, this is their, you know, my company is my livelihood, right? But we're talking about their actual tickets that, that are pay, they're getting paid on, you know? But at the same time, I can't go and replace that because they're drawn out so far all the time. They're not available. So it would be, you know, kind of dangerous to so, – so we have to cut it off first mm -hmm. and take that step in faith, believing and having that confidence. Yes, you know what? We are good at what we do, and we do care. And, you know, not – you know, in a humble way, I guess I should say, because I feel very humbly about that. But at the same time, we have to have confidence, and I have to convey that confidence to them. And that's taking courage for me, you know, and faith for me. <clears throat> but it also goes back to my character, because this – I can't – I find myself breaching up or – I don't want, I, I, I'm not even allowing it to be breached, but I feel the breaching coming, you know, in my character because I'm, it's, I'm rising, it's, you know, it's rising up in the flesh in me, you know, and, um, you know, I can be pretty hardcore sometimes, you know, and, and you don't necessarily, you know, you don't want that in business. So I just really thought about the, the, the tools of these three things themselves the the confidence, the character, the courage. Um, you know, I'm a lot older. I, I've had time to maybe, you know, muster up some of those things, but I think that I've, you know, kind of been one of those people that hasn't had a lot of family support, like from myself outward, like moms and, and, and grandparents, right? A lot, my, my, my children and down. But for for everybody, I think it's important to remember that, you know, whether we're doing it for ourselves, um, for the people that we love, and you should be doing it for yourself, and you should be doing it for the people that you love. And if you're not, I really challenge you to put that on, you know, a high on your list of the stuff that you we've inspired you to do tonight because, um, you know, it's okay, and you need to take those first steps and love yourself and love others, you know. Um, have your boundaries and all that good stuff, but you you got to be willing to love others, and you've got to be willing to love yourself. And, like, this is where I want to try to take some of what we've talked about tonight that each of us has lent um, and, and get each of your thoughts on it and then sort of try to tie it up before we, you know, have to end tonight. What are your thoughts, Mary? Well, I would say that, you know, I'm so grateful for everything that we've shared tonight. Yeah. 
It's so amazing and beautiful to get a group of people together mm-hmm. and have a deep conversation and to and to be open and to be you know and it's to be vulnerable. Yeah. And it's to be willing. And you know, go ahead. No, I'm I'm so you know, in vulnerability No. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> Vulnerability, I think, is one of the biggest parts of this, is allowing yeah. yourself to soften and open. You know, and I just feel very blessed tonight, and I feel like I got to learn some new pieces. I know. I did, too. I, I really, like, I didn't set out to learn anything. Like, I wanted to. But I really just wanted to offer stuff, you know, like stuff that you can do. <laughs> like my my new daughter in law would say, stuff, stuff that you can do, and that's really the bottom line, you know, because I mean, like one of my biggest pet peeves is is when people bitch about something and do nothing, mm. you know. Like, I have this plaque on my wall in the kitchen that says, no whining. And I, I've i had it on my wall since, since my kid, like, for over 30 years. That tells you how old I am. And I used to tell my kids, I'd make them look at the sign, and I'd say, do you see that sign? Do you see that red blinking light? And there's no light at all, <laughs> much less a red blinking light. <laughs> but they knew what I meant. Right. Because to me, that was the way it felt when they were whining, and and you know the 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 less that they were helping themselves, the more that red light was going off, the more that that kid would be whining, you know. And I think that's true with ourselves too, you know. The more it, it, we it, we you have to be part of the solution by you by not being part of the problem. And if all you're doing is complaining and complaining, mm-hmm. even if it's about your own thing, whatever, you're part of the problem. Your problem, their problem, whatever. Right. So the only way to not be part of the problem and be part of the solution is to do something about it. You know, like get down on the ground, get your knees dirty, roll your sleeves up, you know, be willing to do that. And um it could be a blast. Like, you might find out it's a freaking black. Yeah. And you know what I have found out? I have I have found out that I have parts of myself that I have reclaimed. Mm-hmm. I have found things that yes. I love to do. Lost yes. childhood. Yes. Yes. Totally. And things ambition. I never, never thought treasure. to do. Right. Yes. And that bucket list. And yeah. so, you know, that yeah. is freedom. Yeah. That's yeah. freedom. Yeah, it is. It is. And, um, okay, like, you can't see us right now, or maybe you can later because I know I know Kat is is getting some some stuff on video. But the the thing of it is, is we're just regular girls, okay? That's all we really are, you know. I'm a mom. I got a bunch of kids and a bunch of grandkids. You know, I'm self-employed. I've been trying to buy a house for five years, and I mean, I whine about that all the time. But every time, I'm like. Okay, wait. Am I doing everything I can? And then I I realize, oh my oh, oh my gosh, it's been two days since I've texted the realtor or I've made this phone call, you know. And man, that complacency can really get in there, especially when it feels like shit to be doing this stuff because you've been doing it for five freaking years and you just want to be done with it. And I'm really like, this is how I feel about it. <laughs> right, right. But I have to do it. Yeah. Because the only other option is just to keep on running, and that's just not an option. And whine about it. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and whining is, is not does not make, I don't think, make us feel better. Yeah. I really don't. I yeah. think just the act, like you were saying earlier, saying, you know, no, 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 it ta- it's just, it takes so much more effort. Whining takes so much more effort than prayer. Right. And also... Give yourself the opportunity to whine about it once. Oh, at least. Schedule some time in yes. your day. Take your time. Don't keep freaking past. doing it. Whine. And do, do nothing it. about it. Yeah. But then let go of that and move yes. on to the next step. And, you know, don't get stuck in the step. Yes. Well, one of my favorite, like, of all things is let go, let God. 
And I have to tell myself that all the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I feel like, you know, I, I cultivate my relationship all the time, but I'm still telling myself all the time. So that tells me, you know, that if I'm working to keep that present in my mind, how, how much we all need to do that because because you have to keep telling yourself. Um, one of the other principles that I think come to my mind here, and this ties in with confidence and courage and character because it takes those things. Um, there's something that I, that I call the principle of scarcity. Um, and bottom line, we all know what scarcity means. You know, it's when something is just scarce. Um, and it's really easy to get caught up in that. And and then everything in your life is as it pertains to scarcity. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and in my case, you know, I live with other people. So my viewpoint on scarcity doesn't, it, it kind of gets muted because I'm like one of a mass of people that thinks like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the bottom line is, is everything is going to be okay. And you have the power to make it okay. And you can reach out and and do the things that you need to do to make it okay. And when you, I think, engage in that, you're going to bring that to be, right? Like, we could all say that in a different way. I know we all think that, all four of us here. Um, I pray, um, you know, some people pray and meditate. Some people just, it's, it's the whatevers. I, I have a friend that calls it the whatevers. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, she, she just fills it in there. And I love that, too, because it's the whatevers. It's whatever you need to do to get your mind believing that you're going to be okay. Because I promise you, if a chick like me can be okay, most of the time, if not all the time, then anyone can. Because <laughs> honestly, you know. Yeah. And um, and we just have a few more more minutes, enough for each of us to kind of give our thoughts on it before we kind of do our takeout and let her, let everybody know how to reach us and when we're coming back to to give everybody else some more. But what do you think, Kat? You're sitting right now. I just want to make a comment on the stories you told about your whatever and all that and getting through all of the things you've gotten through. And I just have to say, just in the, the period of time I've known you, I've seen you go through so mm. much. Stuff. So many whatever. So many whatever. <laughs> and your resilience, the fact you have seven children and you have a million grandchildren and you have some kids that are still in the house and you have a husband, you guys have a huge business that you're running and it's just like... Whoa, you know, you have a lot of stuff on your plate. So it's not just me that feels it's like that. Not, <laughs> I marvel at you, Carrie Light. Like oh, you're also thank going you. through your physical hip surgeries and everything. Like, whoa. Yeah, it's been and a big couple amazing. of years. And I wanna add that when I'm here, it's love, baby. It's, it's love, 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 love. That's I feel cool. yeah. like and I feel like I'm at home. Me too. Yeah. And yeah. your kids are just incredible. Yeah, and your family is so very amazing. Welcoming, like, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, and the yeah. fact that we all kind of congregated here for different reasons. Yeah, I mean, you know, that the the if there's two things everybody takes away tonight, um, and I hope, you know, that you get much more than that. But the two takeaways is one, the the lie is that you can't be okay. Um, and if there's anybody out there that, for any reason, thinking to yourself, oh yeah, whatever, lady. I mean, that is when I want to reach out to you and personally invite you um, to to come find me on Facebook, message me. Um, I will pray with you or whatever with you. Um, you know, surround yourself, people, with people. Um, you know, whether it's one person, whether it's your person, whether it's a lot of people, um, I, you know, I don't care. Maybe it's an online person. You know, really, whatever you need to do, 
surround yourself with with something positive, with lots of positive. And I'm telling you, if it's not positive, it's a lie. And that's the truth. And the really cool thing about truth is, is when you lay it out there, that's it. It's just right there. There's nothing more. There's nothing bigger. It's all right there. Snap, bam, you move forward from there. And when you don't have that truth, anything but that truth, it just, it just, it's like, um, you know, like a nasty cluster magnet that just keeps mm. pulling in, you know, and it just gets bigger and, bigger and it just becomes harder and harder. And all of that is a lie. Cause it doesn't mm. have to be that way. Right. That's the one thing. You, you do not, it does not have to not be okay. And if it isn't okay, then fight. Do something and fight to make it okay. And you know we're we're here offering these these ideas are like I said just a few. And the other thing is never give up, never never give up. And on that, I just want to thank everybody. I want to um, give everybody a chance to get a pen and paper out real quick. Just grab it or or your notepad on your phone or whatever. Um, and give you the, some of the contact info for, for my guests. Um, Mary Adams is the co-owner of Co-Creator Radio Network. And you can find that at co-creatornetwork.com. And you can also email her at co-creatormaryadams at gmail.com. And... Um, do that, like, like actually do that, because uh, we are going to try to be bring you view point uh, from the virtual round point round table as as much as possible. Um, you can find Katarina at katarinaroy.com. That's k a t e r i n a r o y dot com, and you can reach. Jennifer Pennington at jenniferpennington at gmail.com, and it is spelled exactly like it sounds. Um, and I just want to invite you all, you can, like I said, find me on Facebook, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart and from the bottom of my guest's heart for joining us tonight. Spread the word, spread the, and share the podcast, and we will see you back here next week at Make That Change on Truthfinders Network. Good night, everybody. Have a blessed night and a safe week.